Is it me? Or do you have problems with being you? Just like your authentic self. I know for me, I've been having this problem, this struggle for the last couple of weeks. Just trying to figure out if I'm being me. I keep looking at the UC stuff all the time. I'm just, I'm just going through it all the time. Saying, Josh, is that you? Are you really being you? I don't feel like I'm being myself yet. I don't really feel like I've found my niche. And it's so hard to be yourself in this world where there's so many people judging you and criticizing you on everything you do. I just want to be me. But the question is, do you even remember you? I know for so many people, they're lost. They might not have a clue who they are. They've lost themselves in being somebody else so long that they don't remember who they really are. I know you want to be yourself. I know you have struggles getting your point across and you try to figure out how to say it without hurting someone's feelings. I just want to be me and I want you to be you. But I guess we have to figure out how. So do you remember you? Let's figure it out. Before we do, let's pray. You know we can't start anything without prayer time. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to pray. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you would just help us, Father God, to be our authentic selves. Help us to be who you called us to be. Those are great kings and queens and women of God and men of God. I thank you that you would help us to all be just like you. Help us to want what you want. Help us to think the way you think. Help us to do what you do. I know that we can't fathom the way you think, Lord God, but help us to be close to you so that everything that we do lines up with what you do. I pray that you would just give us a word, open up our hearts and our ears so that we can and do what you've called us to do and be who you've called us to be. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys ready to get started this week? It's a new series. Help me welcome Mr. Burrell Billingsley. Hi, what a wonderful week. We've seen a lot of stuff going on this week. Murders, people dying, and all kinds of things that are in disarray here in the country. But we wanted to give you a word about remembering you, who God called you to be. There's all kinds of things that throw us off in this society, but we have to always remember that God has called us to something better and greater. One of my favorite artists right now is a young man by the name of Rod Wave. He has an album out called Ghetto Gospel. One of the songs, my favorite song, is Chip On My Shoulder. In that song, in that track, Rod Wave, he talks about uh, how he literally remembers coming from the slums. And then he talks about how he prayed to God every day on what his purpose was. It makes me think about a young man in the Bible in Genesis by the name of Jacob. When we meet Jacob, Jacob is in a very precarious situation because he is what we like to call a trickster. Jacob's name literally means trickster. His name in the Hebrew rendering means a supplanter, somebody who does things by ill-gotten gain, tricks others. So when we come into the identity of who God has called us to be, we have to understand the things that have caused us to be where we are. What do you mean, Burrell? Uh, this young man, Jacob, had been tricking people his whole life and exactly to the point of one of the things that he did was he tricked his brother out of his brother's birthright. When he tricked his brother out of his brother's birthright, he decided to run and he hid and he found a man and found a woman who he loved to the point that he was willing to stop playing the game. However, even though his name was still Jacob, he had changed in some way, but God always, watch this, lets us know in the Bible that we reap what we sow. You never can be so 
spiritual that you never realized there's some things that you caused on your own in your life. What do you mean, Burrell? Well, what happened was Jacob married Rachel and he thought that he had married Rachel and Laban decided to give him the daughter that was not as attractive as the one he wanted, which means he got back what he sold. We have to remember there are times in our life where when we are remembering who we are, that we have to deal with the actions and the things that we've done to hurt other people. I'm included in that myself. I have done a lot of stuff in my past that has hurt people. And when it came back on me, I had to realize that this was not God punishing me. It was not the devil. It was literally Borel having to deal with the issues and the pain that I caused and inflicted on myself because of what I did to others. So here we see Jacob having to deal with having to be tricked and being had the way that he had had other people. But this is not enough. So what happens is that really, really makes me excited was in chapter number 32 too. It's because Jesus, or an angel of the Lord, literally has an encounter with Jacob. But before we get to the encounter, one of the things we have to understand is in 30 is when it all starts to unveil and unravel. In 30, Jacob um, has his wives and his wives decide that they can't have any more children. So what they do is they give him his concubine. Let me pause right here. Men, women, whoever. Never ever think that giving someone what they want will ever suffice and fulfill you and fulfill your needs. Because in those instances, Leah and Rachel wanted to be able to give him something, but because they couldn't, they allowed him to settle and gave him what he wanted instead of what they deserved themselves. Never sell yourself for that of someone else. This all is a part of remembering you. How does God reveal himself to us? The young man, my boy, Proud Wade said in the rap verse, he said, I had to literally claw and fight. He said, mama said it'd be storms. Mama said it'd be raining, but it's been tornadoes. Watch this, what he's saying is this. I've been through some stuff that would cause other people to die, but it's literally made me stronger in remembering what I was here for. My purpose, was to be a prophetic voice in a sense of a hood and rap and get out the hood where I was at. It's beautiful because he understood that every day he said in the track that I get on my knees and I find my purpose and we have to understand something. Watch this. Every day, I'm not saying that you have to be perfect. I'm not saying you have to get it all right. But you have to understand your purpose. Let's go to verse chapter number 31. So what happens in chapter number 31 is this. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He tells Laban, watch this, Laban, hey, man, I've worked for you. I've done everything you asked me to do. It's time for me and my family to keep it moving and go on to what we have to do. It's very reminiscent of what happened when people brought us over here on slave ships and told us that we were indentured servants and if we worked our time, they would give us our free. And they did it. Here Laban was saying, no, nah, you still got to work for me because watch this. We're seeing it now where people are forcing us to go back to work before we should really be going back because it doesn't fit the narrative that they want. The narrative that shows that their oppression is more important than my purpose. But what God showed me in this text was, watch this. I'm literally putting you in the dreams of your haters. Where do you see it? It's right there in the text. It's right there in the text. In chapter number 31, Laban literally is upset with Jacob because Jacob did what he told him to do. We see that now where people are upset with you because you're doing the job that you were told to do. They laid you off so you found something else. This is the season that even though people are trying to get rid of you, God says, I'm going to build you in a place that should have killed you. It's right here. Laban did not expect him to grow in this season and he ended up being very rich. Go back and look at chapter 30. At the end, he literally came up in a time where he was supposed to be dying. 31, we see now his haters are talking, which God told me to tell you, he's going to put you in a place where you can hear your haters blueprint for your life. He literally says, he literally hears the dudes talking about him and saying, hey man, we got to get rid of old boy, man. He doing more for himself than he's doing for our father. And God allows him to be in a strategic place. Watch this. Because he's being obedient to repeat and get 
what the enemy thought he was about to steal. I just came to tell a couple of people that God is about to put you in a place that what the enemy thought was going to destroy you, God is about to use it to help you grow. Because when you're remembering you, you have to number one first focus on who you are. Now, this is interesting because Jacob's name up to this point is still Jacob. Jacob decides that him and his family are going to keep it moving and they're going to take it to the next level. What God does next is incredible. God tells Jacob to go back. Let me pause here. A lot of times in remembering ourselves and finding out what God wants from us, we have to not look at going back as a demotion, but rather a preparation and a launch. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, we used to have this little toy. It was like a slingshot and you'll pull it back. But when you let it go, it will go further than it was when you pulled it back. So God told me to tell you, do not despise small beginnings. But watch this. He also told me, do not despise him telling you that sometimes taking a step back is my purpose for you to go back to see the steps that you may have missed that I need you to hit. Because what happened is Jacob goes back and he mends a fence with his brother. Wow. How many people have you been in avoiding that are actually connected to your destiny and all they've been waiting for you to do is come back and apologize? It's literally in the text. I'm telling you, I promise you in 31, he literally comes back to his brother and God mends that fence. And then in the text, God says, I will have you. We're worried about jobs that are laying us off, that are furloughing us, people that are telling us that we can't, we're not employable. And God says, hey, you might have to move back in with your mama. You might have to move back in with your sister. You might have to swallow up your pride and go and ask your brother, hey man, let me back in. Because guess what? God has an incubator stage that is created when you go back. That's chapter 31. Now let's talk about the name change. Anytime you're remembering you, you have to remember that God will change your name. He might not even, watch this, he might not even change the situation, but he'll change your name. In 32, what happens is, Jacob is, is literally wrestling with an angel. In the text, the angel of the Lord, which is God, asked him what his name is. Jacob says, my name is Jacob. In the text, he wrestles with the angel. The angel asked him his name. His name in the text is Jacob. But the angel says, no, that's not your name anymore. Come here. Come closer. Stop allowing people to call you what you used to be when you're now remembering you. Stop answering to what you used to be and answer what God has called you. Watch this. After the fight. Come here, I'm going to help you. After the fight literally means this. He was wrestling with the angel and the angel said, you fought people and you won. You fought me and you won. You wrestled with God and you won. God told me to tell you, the scar that is on you is a reminder that God brought you through something and nobody can take that away from you. The scar of your credit being bad, the scar of your marriage failing, the scar of people lying about you, the scar of you having illegitimate children, the scar of you dropping out of school, the scar of you being a laughter to everybody. God says that scar is what I'm using to put a brand on you that you are mine. So you don't have to answer to it anymore because now your name has changed. What was his name? His name incidentally now is Israel, which means God changed his name from who he was to where he was going. Now, this is the interesting thing. God changed his name before his situation changed, <laughs> which literally means, watch this. It's not about me having the number one role at church. It's not about me being able to know all the scripture. It's not about me knowing all the, how to speak in tongues and how to wear fancy suits. It's about me identifying who God has changed me to and God saying my name has changed. 
My name can be changed when I'm in prison. My name can be changed when I'm sitting in sin. It doesn't mean that God is justifying it. It means he justified me so I can change with where he's taking me. That's all I came to tell you today. In remembering you, remember. My boy Wade said it on Ghetto Gospel. Every day I get on my knees and ask God my purpose. did not say God answered my dreams because I was in church because I knew what to say it's because he got on his knees I petition you get on your knees block out the noise first three things you got to do remember you got to identify your wrong you're not perfect none of us are ask God to forgive you Address the people that you wrong. Apologize to them. Move on and let God change your name. So, Burrell, what is my new name? My name is Child of God. My name is more than a conqueror. My name is the head and not the tail. My name is loved. My name is victorious. My name is winner. That is your name. Man, I love Ghetto Gospel. It's one of my favorite CDs. You should check it out. I promise you, it'll bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you. Now, let's bow our heads. I just want to say a prayer for you for this week. Because a lot of us have a difficulty addressing and accepting our newness when the old us is hovering over us. So we got to pray and ask God to block the enemy's hand on what I used to be so that I can focus on what you call me to be. Dear Father, I thank you for this glorious moment. I thank you for this life-changing moment. That people that are looking at us now are knowing that they don't have to be what people think they have to be. That the term unconventional church is not something that we just talk about, but it's who we are. And as an unconventional church, God, we pray and ask you to change our heart. Right now in this moment, God, we ask you to show us the blueprint of what our name is going to be. God, as we drop to our knees every day and just send you up a prayer, speak to us in our quiet moments. Be with us when we don't know the answers. And when we don't hear your voice, God, please write it on the tablets of our heart and our dreams, God. Show us who we are in you. Bless us and blow our mind this week. Give us a peace this week. In Jesus' name. praying for you. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed.